YouTubers, welcome back. Um, I've had some interest that people want to know how to make this window sill right here. So um, we're gonna do that today. I have some pieces that I, I prep just because they take a little while to make, but I'll show you exactly how I do it and how to get this nice window sill if it's perfectly around the outside of your window right here, instead of having something like this. Sorry I don't have it loose already, but there is a, a metal frame that goes around your window. This is any any aftermarket window that I've seen has this metal frame. That's what all the screws are in here. Um, this is an OEM window, so it doesn't have it, but any, like even the larger windows, you can do the same method for the larger windows. But what you wanna do is you wanna take this frame out and trace around the outside. And you're gonna do that into a half inch piece of plywood, which I'll show you in a minute. And you're gonna cut that out and then you're gonna cut out a quarter inch or slightly more than a quarter inch off of that one as well. And you want those two pieces and I'll show you those in a minute. So this is a piece of plywood I was talking about. So the first thing that you're gonna do is use that metal rim around the window. You're gonna put it down on your half inch piece of plywood. You're gonna trace around that and cut around that. And you want that to be pretty exact and you're gonna have this piece that's cut out of it. And then, you're gonna to wanna to cut a quarter inch out of the inside of this piece of plywood. And it's actually a little bit more than a quarter inch depending on the, the board that you use, the bender board um, that goes around this. And you're gonna have two layers. So I would measure a little bit more than two layers of the bender board that goes around this. And then that's how much you wanna cut out of this half inch piece of plywood. And you get something like this. So there's a, there's an area around this, but you, but this piece in the middle is important. I'll show you why. So in these windows, the depth is about an inch and a half. And what you're going to do is, well, this is fender board that uh, I'll show you if I can get it out of here. It's been soaking in water. There it goes. So, this is bender board that has not been soaking in water. So, as you can see, it's very bendy. But if you bend it too much, it snaps. You don't want it to snap. So, if you soak it in water, it becomes even more pliable. So, that's a pretty, like this is wood that can bend that much. It's pretty awesome. So, this is a this is for a different window, so it's it's wider, but I'm just gonna use it for this example. Uh, what you're gonna do is you're well first you're gonna rip this bender board down to about two inches if it's this type of window. Layer one. <laughs> so you want two layers of this, and there's a there's a joint right here. So what I like to do is make sure that my other joint is somewhere over here, or just just so that I have a solid piece going over this joint to strengthen this joint. So you're gonna do two of those layers. As you, as you can see, it's kind of a pain in the butt. It's easier when you have two people. You have one person holding it in because it's just come out of the corners constantly. But, um, but you want this inner piece the same size as the window, so when you put this all together, you know that it's gonna fit over the window. So after you have those two layers, you're gonna let them dry first, and they're gonna stay pretty, pretty intact. They'll bounce out a little bit when you take it out, but you're gonna take them out, you're gonna glue the inside of this, spread it out with your finger, make sure every single piece gets glued. You may have little gaps, in this and it's totally okay because you can cut out another piece of this it's the same size and just glue it in there you don't want to leave the gap because when you put the fabric over it there'll be a bump right there because it'll show everything so you're going to glue it maybe give it a, a light sand afterwards then you're going to use your frame and you're going to glue this into the frame so what i like to do is glue on the outside glue on this part of the frame all the way around. Make sure you have plenty of glue on here. It's kind of messy, totally okay. I'm gonna stick this in here. Nice. 
nice and tight. So you want to do that. Uh, it's great if you can get another clamp on this side as well. And then there might be gaps. You could probably see a little bit of gap around this corner right here. And, uh, and that's okay. I, I would probably, I mean, I would definitely fill that in with uh, wood filler afterwards. And when you're done, you'll have this. So this is glued up all the way around in here. Um, here's a little spot that I had a gap. So I filled that in with another piece. Uh, I still have to give that a light sand. Um, I used a little wood filler right here. So I had a little bit of a crack, but this now fits perfectly over that window. After you've completed the windowsill and before you attach the fabric, you wanna actually put it over the window and attach the wall panel. And the wall panel needs to have a hole in it because that's where your router is gonna go. So the router bit that you want is a straight bit with a bearing at the very end of it. And what you're gonna do is put it in that hole that you put in and make sure that hole is either on the left or the right side or somewhere not directly in the middle because when you put your router bit in it, it's gonna grab your window handle and chew that thing up. So either the left or the right and you're gonna just trace that bearing is gonna catch the inside of your windowsill and it's gonna make a perfect cut all the way around. And the other really important thing is you wanna make sure that wall panel is pressed up against your windowsill. If it's not and there's a big crack right there, then that bearing is gonna fall off of your windowsill and you're gonna make a big old gouge in your wall panel. So now, now that it's all glued up, dried up, sanded, we wanna put fabric on it. And what we're gonna do is use a piece of fabric that goes on in this fashion and wraps all the way around. We're gonna glue it to this flat side first and then we're gonna wrap it around this side and then we're gonna wrap it around that side. So first, you wanna know the thickness that you want. So you want this fabric to come around enough to where you can staple it in here and make sure it's really solid. And you also want it to wrap around the back side. And I actually like to staple it on the back side too. So measure right here, add this, add whatever this distance is on here as well. And an easy way that I found to cut fabric is have two pieces of plywood set up or your workbench and a piece of plywood and measure whatever, whatever width of plywood you want. So in this, we're gonna go, this is an inch and a half plus let's say two inches or three and a half inches plus another inch and a half, so five inches. I'll put another half inch on that as well. So. so we want a six inch piece that's gonna go around that. So I'm gonna move this plywood out. Six inches from the edge of my workbench. And you also need to know the length of the, the length of the piece that you want. So for that, I'm gonna measure, I mean basically you need the length of this, length of that, length of both of those. Um, for this particular piece, it's about eight, it's about seven and a half feet that you actually need. So I'm gonna cut eight feet. And I already have a piece cut out, so I'm not gonna cut a, another piece, and this is already for a different window. But I just wanna show you what I do. So I would line this up with the edge of my workbench, and I'll use my scissors, and my scissors will just go against this. So the, so the bottom scissor stays on that workbench the entire time. And here I'll chop a little piece off, just to show you how easy it is. That's it. Pretty uniform, it's really easy. I didn't even screw that down or clamp it down or anything. Just a, a little trick to get you a nice straight cut. So this is the piece that I've cut for this window frame and this is what I'm using to glue it on here. Um, I'll put a link to this in the description. It's a, it's basically a paint spray gun. I think it's a 1.8, yeah, 1.8 nozzle on here. So a decently thick nozzle. And this is some serious adhesive glue. Uh, I ordered it from Granger Industrial Supply and 
To do an entire van, uh, you're probably gonna go through two gallons of this paint, or this uh, glue, sorry. So I would, I would recommend getting these two gallons. This is really important too. Uh, this has all kinds of danger stuff on it about respiratory and, and breathing it. It doesn't smell particularly good. And after you glue all this stuff up, you're gonna let your panels sit out for, for a good several days as well and let them air out and let that glue and the off-gassing and all that dissipate. Um, the other great tool, I got this pneumatic staple gun. It's like my best friend now. It has a, a safety switch right here so that the trigger will not engage unless this is pointed down. So all I have to do is hold the trigger and I just go bam, 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 bam. And it's super quick, super easy. I love it. Um, I really recommend it over the hand staplers because if you're, especially if you're doing an entire van and you're gonna do it the right way and actually staple it, uh, your hand's gonna be super tired of this thing. It's just way, way easy. And I'll put a link to this as well, but I got it from Home Depot, I think it was 60 bucks. So uh, it's not breaking the bank or anything. And also the, the staples that I'm using, this goes down to a quarter inch. Uh, you don't want anything more than a quarter inch. You want it to go through the fabric, into the wood. Um, some of the places that you're gonna be stapling this to is going through about a quarter of an inch. So when a quarter of an inch plus the fabric is like, you're there. Let's get to it. Right here, I'm just measuring so I know exactly where I'm going to fold it. And I like to do that on both sides. That way it's uniform on each side. I'll show you that later. Then you wanna give it about a minute to dry. After about a minute, you're gonna fold it and it should stick really nicely. As long as you have a nice square cut, this should line up nice and perfectly with the weave of your material. Here I've cut a groove and do a two x four and that's gonna be used as a mount while I'm gluing up the windowsill. All the fabric adhesives I've ever used require you to spray on the materials that you're bonding and then wait a minute or two before actually attaching them together. So I'm gonna lay the material all the way down without glue on it just to measure the length of it. And then I'm gonna add an inch to it and, and then make my line just how I started so I have the exact same fold on each side. At the very end, you can see I have a piece of blue tape over where I started and that's for when I glue. I don't wanna get any overspray on, on top of the existing fabric that I've already glued down. And I like to leave the edge of the fabric exposed and that way the two pieces of fabric where they meet can actually adhere to each other. When I spray this, I'm doing my best to avoid overspray on the already glued down material. Now I'm making some relief cuts around the edges and I really recommend making the cuts much shorter than you actually think they should be. And then fold it over before you glue it. And I like to stretch it when I fold it over and you'll see that the cuts don't need to be as long as you think that they do. So don't cut it all the way down to the wood or down to the edge or anything. Make sure there's plenty of room and it stretches around and looks way better. So I put plenty of staples in these things and each piece that I've cut, I wanna make sure that those are stapled and I, I also staple on each side. And the staples that I'm using are a quarter inch long, which is plenty to go through the material and into the wood and prevent it from going through the other side. So this is the piece that is gonna go uh, where the window is. 
So I showed, showed it to you when it didn't have the window frame in it, and it was just a hole next to the window. So just to give you a better idea, those get screwed together, and that's what you get. Here's the seam. I just wanted to show this to you. Uh, the reason I measure is because there's a little bit of a bump under here. Most people are never gonna notice it, but I just like it to be uniform on each side of the seam just because. And I always put the seam on the top of the window. So people are gonna be, you know, they're gonna be looking down on the window usually and any part of this seam that could possibly be visible is just not going to be. So uh, just a recommendation for you. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, you just saw how to build a window frame, and uh, I'd love it if you comment, if you liked it, if you have any suggestions, improvements. I always like to get better at what I do. But, um, so yeah, leave them in the comments below. Let me know what you liked, and and uh, yeah, and if, if something doesn't work out, I just uh, just now popped into my head, and you have this thing, and just like it doesn't fit or something, you could just be a gangster. You could wear it like a necklace if it comes to that. So just an idea for you guys. Uh, please like and subscribe. <laughs> Phone's ringing in the background. <laughs> please like and subscribe. Um, I, I love seeing new subscriptions and, and likes. It, uh, it just makes me want to keep doing what I'm doing. So uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.